All right, everyone, exercise number four in our progression. Number one was the rock back uh, tuck with a pad under your left knee. Number two was rocking back and forth on your back. Number three was rolling back and forth side to side on your back. Number four today is a plank on both hands, like you're doing the top of a push-up. But the focus now, because you shift, is now we need to scoot up from not just getting air out, but we need to try to symmetricalize things a little bit more. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm using it and I think you'll understand what I mean. So what we're gonna do here is try to push evenly in the ground with each of our hands. You might notice it's more difficult than it sounds like it is, but that's kind of the, the idea here. It shouldn't be easy, right? So plank position. I'm noticing already that my uh, left hand, the index finger wants to come up off the ground. My right hand is pretty flat in the ground. I'm also noticing my right wrist feels much better than my left one does. So we're gonna have to play around with that a little bit. Let's come up on our hands. Well, let's stay on our knees first. Biggest thing to make this work is we gotta tuck our hips. So tuck your tailbone between your legs. Do you feel your lower outer abdominals turn on? If not, maybe you did this. <sighs> that helps me feel my inner abdominals, but not my lower outer abdominals. So don't crunch your chest down. Instead, just tuck your hips back. Okay, and I feel my low back round out. It kind of relaxes a little bit, and I feel more of my abs turn on. If you still don't feel it, take a breath in, take a breath out, get all that air out. Oh, yep, and I feel them turn on even more. Perfect. Now, hang on to that hip tuck, come up slowly so you don't lose it. Lots of times people will just do this. Okay, I lost it there, so don't lose it. Tuck your hips, come up into your push up position, and we're going to push away from the ground so that my upper, upper back comes towards the sky. And now, as I was saying before, my right hand is flat. <sighs> I'm just gonna hang out here for 30 seconds or so. My right hand is flat, my left one doesn't wanna be. So let's push that hand down a little bit more. There we go, I feel a little more even now. <sighs> Good, I'm trying to feel my abs the same. There, I think I got it. <sighs> Keep breathing, see what changed. Oh, I found my right abs again. Let's find my left ones again. Good. So the key here again is those positions, that setup that we did. But after you get that, you should be able to do that on your own pretty automatically after, you know, maybe two days of trying this. And then the secret is, Let's push evenly into the ground. Make those hands flat. And then the secret after that, the next step, as we kind of saw, is breathing changes everything. So see what it changes. See what uh, no longer feels quite the same and then fix that. Try to just go back, re-educate your body, how to be a little bit more symmetrical. And then we can start to put all these pieces together to fix this right hip shift. You know, when you when you do your right hip shift, we talked about earlier in the first video, your hip bone will come a little higher. When that happens, these abs turn on more. And so I have a right hip shift and I have a lot of right abs when I do my push-up. Do you think they're related? Yes, I do. Lance, thank you for asking. Um, that's why we're doing a push-up, right? Not everything is just squatting. The squat is not totally independent of the upper body, of the neck, of the head, or anything. So we need to really appreciate everything that's going on at other parts of the body and not be so focused just on what's happening at the hips.